Have you ever wondered how the salt we use every day is created? Does it truly come from the sea or from hidden salt mines deep beneath the earth? In reality, salt, often referred to as white gold, is not extracted in just one way. Beyond its familiar role in our daily meals, salt also carries profound values for health and the economy that you may have never considered. In this film, join us on a journey from the vast oceans to the sunlit salt fields and discover the answer for yourself. Salt production is among the oldest human activities, with origins tracing back to 6000 BC. The first records of salt manufacturing and trade appear in China's Sichuan province around 3000 BC. In ancient Egypt, salt was already in use by 2000 BC, primarily for preserving fish and meat. Across the centuries, its role has never diminished. Even today, China remains the world's largest producer of salt a country where the government once maintained a monopoly over the salt trade for as long as 2,500 years. Sea salt in particular carries immense value, both for health and for the economy. Unlike rock salt or mineral lake salt, sea salt retains trace minerals such as magnesium, potassium, and calcium, enhancing both its flavor and nutritional profile. Economically, the harvesting and export of sea salt provide a stable source of income for coastal communities, generating employment opportunities while also fueling the broader food processing industry. Every process of salt making begins with the most fundamental step, the preparation of the salt fields. The ground of each field is compacted firmly to prevent water from seeping through, then covered with a fine layer of clay or cement. This prevents mud and soil from mixing into the salt and makes harvesting far more efficient. Surrounding the fields is a carefully engineered network of channels, sluices, and embankments designed to draw seawater in and regulate its level with precision. The salt fields themselves are divided into a sequence of ponds, each with a specialized function, settling ponds to remove impurities, concentration ponds to gradually raise the salinity, and finally crystallization ponds, the very place where salt is born. Once the salt fields are prepared, farmers begin channeling seawater into the settling ponds. At this stage, the water typically carries an initial salinity of only about 3%. The seawater is drawn directly from the ocean through canals or nearby coastal lagoons, located in areas with abundant and relatively unpolluted supplies. The quality of this seawater plays a critical role, for the cleaner and more mineral-rich it is. The purer and whiter the resulting salt crystals will be, yielding a product of higher value both in appearance and in quality. Here, the heavier minerals and impurities slowly settle to the bottom through the natural process of sedimentation, clarifying the seawater before it enters the evaporation stage. At this point, the water is noticeably cleaner than at the start, functioning as a natural filtration system that removes unwanted residues while preserving the salt. Only the clear surface water is drawn off and channeled into the next pond, ensuring that the final salt crystals emerge cleaner, whiter, and of higher purity. Before the water is transferred, salt workers must carefully measure its salinity. Typically, after a period of sun exposure, the concentration rises slightly to around 5 and 8 percent as part of the water has already evaporated. This step is absolutely critical, ensuring that the water is only moved onward once it has reached the proper salinity level, laying the groundwork for an efficient and precise crystallization process later on. Once transferred into the shallow concentration ponds, the seawater is left under the sun and stirred by the wind to accelerate evaporation. As the water gradually evaporates, the salt within becomes more concentrated, causing salinity levels to rise steadily over time. Throughout this stage, salt workers must monitor salinity with precision. They rely on specialized measuring instruments, combined with years of experience, to determine the exact moment when the water is ready. Only when salinity reaches the threshold of 20-25% is the brine allowed to flow into the crystallization ponds. Without careful control, if evaporation continues for too long, other minerals besides sodium chloride, such as gypsum or 
magnesium salts, can crystallize first, contaminating the batch and lowering the quality of the final salt. The saturated brine is transferred into shallow crystallization ponds, where at a salinity of around 28-30%, white crystals begin to form at the bottom. After two to five days of continuous evaporation, a shimmering layer of sodium chloride covers the pond floor, marking the birth of sea salt. Under favorable weather and smooth operations, salt farmers can usually expect their harvest within seven to 10 days. When the crystals reach their ideal size, the long-awaited harvesting begins, often carried out by hand with traditional tools like rakes and shovels. Though labor-intensive, this method preserves the natural shape and purity of the crystals, along with their unique mineral content and flavor. The freshly gathered salt is then heaped into bright white mounds across the fields, creating the iconic landscape of coastal salt villages. But if the rains arrive, the delicate balance is broken, delaying the harvest and at times, wiping out an entire day's work. How many liters of seawater do you think must evaporate to produce just one ton of pure sea salt? Leave your comment below. Immediately after being harvested and gathered, the salt is loaded onto trucks and transported to storage sheds or delivered directly to processing facilities. From the very moment salt begins to crystallize in the fields, farmers strive to preserve its highest natural purity. Yet because the entire process unfolds outdoors, the crystals are easily exposed to dust, sand, seaweed, or other organic matter carried in the air and seawater. After harvest, raw salt is usually heaped and left to dry naturally under the sun, but the level of cleanliness achieved is still far from sufficient for direct use in industry or daily life. Once delivered to the factory, the coarse salt is poured into a central receiving hopper, the gathering point that prepares the material for further treatment. Here, a preliminary screening system removes larger impurities such as stones, shell fragments, or residual organic debris. In many cases, the raw salt arrives in large compacted blocks formed during natural crystallization or through compression and storage. To prepare it for downstream processing, factories employ jaw crushers or hammer mills to break these masses into smaller uniform granules. Crushing not only ensures consistency, but also improves the efficiency of subsequent operations like dissolving, drying, or packaging. Even after being crushed and cleaned, raw salt is rarely destined for the table. Instead, it is packaged for alternative uses, spreading on icy roads in winter, softening water in industrial systems, or preserving food through traditional methods. These packages are typically large, heavy-duty sacks ranging from 55 to 110 pounds, designed for easy handling in industrial-scale applications. If raw salt undergoes only basic treatment, refined salt demands far higher standards, especially when destined for food, medicine, or specialized industries. Once delivered to the refinery, raw salt is processed in large freshwater tanks. This stage, known as washing, removes both dissolved impurities such as magnesium, calcium, and sulfates as well as insoluble matter like sand, soil, and organic debris. With the aid of modern technology, vibrating scythes, settling basins, and centrifuges accelerate the washing process, achieving faster throughput, higher efficiency, reduced water use, and minimal salt loss. This is a crucial step to ensure that the refined product reaches high purity levels, often exceeding 99% sodium chloride. The cleaned salt is then dissolved in hot water at 156, 194 degrees Fahrenheit, forming a saturated NaCl solution. Dissolution makes it easier to separate any remaining insoluble particles. The brine then passes through a multi-stage filtration system. A quartz sand layer traps larger debris, activated carbon adsorbs organic compounds, color, and odor, while fine industrial filter cloth captures microscopic suspended particles. This system also removes hazardous heavy metals such as lead, iron, and copper. After this stage, the salt solution emerges crystal clear, nearly perfectly pure, 
and ready for crystallization. The purified brine is pumped into a vacuum crystallization system, a modern device that allows water to evaporate under low pressure. By lowering the pressure, water can boil off at just 140, 158 degrees Fahrenheit, instead of needing to reach 212 degrees Fahrenheit, saving significant amounts of energy. As the vapor gradually escapes, sodium and chloride ions recombine, forming uniform NaCl crystals. Unlike open-air crystallization, vacuum crystallization yields brilliant white, clean salt crystals with far fewer impurities, while also minimizing microbial contamination. The resulting crystals are remarkably consistent in size, smooth in surface, and achieve over 99% purity of nickel, meeting international standards for use in food, pharmaceuticals, and specialized industries. Freshly crystallized salt, however, retains 3 to 5% moisture, making it prone to reabsorption and clumping. To solve this, factories employ a two-stage treatment. First, centrifuges perform preliminary dewatering, quickly reducing surface moisture. Then drying is carried out using fluidized bed systems or conveyor dryers, where hot air at 248-302 degrees Fahrenheit circulates continuously through the salt, causing the grains to float or move evenly. This ensures rapid evaporation, leaving the crystals dry and brittle without altering their structure. The final result is fully dried salt with less than 0.5% residual moisture, stable enough for long-term storage without the need for any caking additives. After drying, the salt crystals often vary greatly in size, some forming coarse grains a few millimeters wide, while others are reduced to fine fragments, almost like dust. To meet the wide range of demands from table salt to industrial grade salt, the entire batch is fed into heavy duty grinding machines. Inside these units, high speed rotating steel rollers or continuously striking hammers break down the larger salt crystals into smaller, more uniform grains. The degree of grinding is carefully calibrated. If the force is too strong, the salt turns into excessive fine dust far beyond what is required. But if the force is too weak, the product remains coarse, failing to reach the desired specifications. For this reason, engineers precisely adjust the rotation speed, the spacing of the rollers, and the duration of operation according to the product being manufactured. In many modern plants, the grinding system is also equipped with dust extraction and recovery devices, reducing salt loss while ensuring a clean production environment. Through this controlled process, the final product emerges with a consistent grain size, ready to move forward to classification and packaging. After the grinding stage, the salt is carried through a multi-deck vibrating screen system. These sieves are engineered with mesh openings of different sizes, allowing the salt to be separated into distinct product streams. Ultra-fine powdered salt, small and medium-sized grains, and large coarse crystals. On some modern production lines, an integrated optical analysis system comes into play, where cameras and sensors examine the color and grain size directly on the conveyor belt, automatically adjusting the sorting process in real time. Through this combination of mechanical precision and digital monitoring, every category of refined salt meets the exact quality requirements and technical specifications demanded by its intended application. Finally, refined salt reaches the packaging stage, the last step before it makes its way into homes, restaurants, and industries around the world. Depending on its purpose, salt can be sealed in small, lightweight bags of just a few ounces, perfectly suited for everyday household use. In contrast, for large-scale needs in the food processing and chemical industries, it is packed into heavy-duty sacks weighing 50 to 100 pounds, ensuring efficiency in transport and storage. For premium lines, extra attention is given. The salt is carefully filled into elegant glass jars or durable plastic containers, balancing both practicality and presentation. Before distribution, every batch must pass rigorous inspection, parameters such as purity, moisture content, whiteness, and food safety are meticulously tested with modern sensors and laboratory analysis, 
so that only products meeting international standards reach the market. Thanks to this multi-layered control, each package, whether a tiny bag or an industrial load, carries the guarantee of consistency, safety, and trust. According to you, how many packages of salt do you think a modern factory can produce in a single day? Leave your guess in the comments below. Sea salt is among the most sustainable resources, never spoiling if stored in a dry, sealed environment. Its production is a careful balance of nature's forces, sun, wind, and seawater, guided by the skill of farmers. Far beyond a simple seasoning, it embodies cultural heritage, nutrition, and the pursuit of sustainable food production. May this journey help you see more clearly how salt travels from the fields to our tables. Like and subscribe to continue exploring with us as we uncover the hidden stories behind the most ordinary things.